Hello everybody, Nick here at Scott and Dickie. We appreciate you stopping by for another one of our weekly tech videos. This video, just like we talked about last week, there's some parts shortage. So we're trying to come up with ideas to show you guys good, useful, technical information that you need to know when working on an LS, big block, small block, it really doesn't matter. Today, we decided to keep it simple and talk about this little guy. Some people called the oil galley dog bone or barbell, I guarantee you, it's not anything for, you know, lifting weights. Come on, let's face it. The last gym I knew of was Jim Clark, the F1 driver. But I digress. We're gonna talk about some of the old galley patches in LS, why this is an important, and what you need to expect when building yours. Now, I'll go ahead and start by saying this is actually a customer's block. We got permission to use it for this video. We appreciate it, buddy. But it's about to be machined. It's about to go into the race shop. His parts have finally arrived after several months of waiting for a nice 416 stroker, but before it went in, I wanted to show you how all this worked. Now, this is a new GM block. Some of y'all might have already noticed it's missing the transmission locator dowels. It is also missing some other plugs here on the side for like coolant passages and oil passages. That's because GM blocks come like this. If you order a bare block from any Chevrolet Performance or GM dealer like us, that's how it's gonna come. And if you take your engine to a machine shop, and they strip it down, they check everything out, they wash it to get it back to you, you usually get it back in that same condition unless specified because they have to pull all that stuff out to make sure all those oil galleries and coolant passages are all cleaned out. Remember, you don't want any trash in there. You fire the thing up, you could chew up you know, bearings, you could chew up a cam, you don't want to cause any trouble. So if they do it right, they're pulling that stuff apart. Most of the time they'll replace it new, mostly because this stuff is cheap. We sell a little block plug kit here and it includes all the stuff you're gonna need when you're working either with a block that's been freshly machined by a machine shop. A lot of machine shops get these from us. We've been selling them for years. Or if you're buying a new one from us, you can purchase this too. It includes all of those pieces, cylinder head dowels, all those threaded uh, uh, block off ports or block off plugs for the oil and coolant ports. Pretty nice. If anybody here has worked on a small block or a big block, remember having to hammer a lot of this stuff in, most of the stuff is now threaded and sealed. I like that. It's really nice, but most machine shops don't want to reuse your old stuff. Why? This is cheap. But one of the things they include in there is this little dumbbell, this little galley plug, and it looks weird. Why does it look like that? Why does it have an O-ring on one side? Where does it go? Why? What were they thinking? Actually, it's pretty ingenious. So to describe this a little bit better, I'm actually going to show you how the oil flows through the block and where this thing comes into play. We're looking at the back side of a block right now. Let's flip this thing around and look at the front. Now, some of y'all remember my oil pump priming video. If you haven't, go watch it, it's pretty trick. We actually show you what happens when you actually pour oil in the way that GM recommends some of the easier shops or easy way to do it in your own shop is through this little plug in the side here. But for those of you that don't know, your oil pump sits here on the snout of the crankshaft. It actually goes in this port right here and goes around the side and towards the back. This plug right here is actually a steel plug that's included in here. It does have to be hammered in. I know, some of these are threaded. There's still a couple that have to be hammered, but it's actually not that bad. Big deal, you really have to put this in or no oil pressure. It will not seal off with the timing cover. We actually get some calls where people assemble their own stuff. They actually know what they're doing. They actually did it right and just missed this one thing. So you definitely need that. And of course, the threaded one on the side. But you can actually see it here on the side, right here in the casting. It goes all the way back here, and then it looks like it turns 90 degrees down these two here. Well, this is where your oil filter is. It's part of the oil pan, but it seals up against the block through two holes right here. Without this plug, two things are going to happen. One, the plug goes here, and oil pressurized oil will come straight out. Same thing. Your rear cover covers this, but it doesn't seal it. Same thing. So if you, if you don't have this, you're getting no oil pressure at all. Here's the other thing. The way these ports are drilled, we're going to pull up a diagram here in a minute for you to look at. The way that these ports are drilled here in the block, these passages, if you don't have this, it also will not divert the oil down into the filter and back up to go through the rest of your system pressurized and filtered. It will go unfiltered and it will leak out the back here. Here's the biggest question we have. Where does the O-ring go and why? Well, because all the oil pressure would be lost in the back here, this O-ring needs to go 
last. And that's all this is. This just pushes in by hand. I'm actually not going to push this in because these actually can be a little tricky to get out. If you have a used block and you're trying to get this out yourself to replace, say you're doing a junkyard build, don't feel bad. We all do it. I've done it too. You got to use like a screwdriver, a knife. Some people actually put like a real small little wood screw in there. They drill it in there to grab it so they can have something to pull out. Another trick, if you have to pan off those old passages at the bottom, you can actually put a screwdriver in there and push it out. Pretty trick. You have to be careful though. Don't damage anything in here. That O-ring does have to seal in there. So if you start scratching stuff up, well, you know, with an old pressure leak that you can never fix without remachining the block. But if you're wondering, okay, so that O-ring here keeps that sealed so we don't lose oil pressure. What's the point of having this part right here, these little ridges on it? Why not just have another plug in the back? Well, like I said, this in the front diverts the oil into one of the oil filter passages so it can come back up the other side. Without that, it would be sealed, but then again, you would never get through your oil filter. It would just bypass it every time. We know that you can't do that. If you're wondering why it is an O-ring, GM engineers did it like that for a couple reasons. One of them was on the off chance that something really crazy happened, oil filter got plugged, something broke, something went wrong, and you need at least some oil being fed into this engine just to limp it home, it can bypass that just ever so slightly, but not even that much. They actually did make it pretty tight fit. I know it doesn't look it coming in here, but once it's installed, it does actually do a pretty good fit. So now that you wondered what this was, now you'll know not to miss it. Now I wanted to, one more tip before I leave. There are some aftermarket versions of this. They're made out of aluminum. Maybe they got double O-ringed. That's fine. Those actually work too. For instance, one of them is Improved Racing as a company, as well as a few others that make those. They're actually really high quality. They make them here in America, 6061 build aluminum, and the O-rings are really high quality. But I will tell you, be careful buying cheap ones online. There's a reason why these are made out of like a Viton style O-ring or another material that can handle heat. Remember, you're sealing an oil passage here. Oil gets really hot. Some cheap, cheap O-rings, well, they can only make it like 200, maybe 250 degrees before they actually start breaking down. We've actually had somebody here that will not be named that had that happen to them where they had one of these installed, had one of these with a cheap O-ring on it. And what happened? All of a sudden they started losing oil pressure when they took it to like a track. And I'm talking like a road course track. And they were wondering why. And they, we found out that was the culprit. So nothing wrong with buying an aftermarket version of these, nothing wrong with buying a double O-ringed one. If you really feel like that extra protection for that extra seal is worthwhile, why not? It's a no problem at all, but make sure you're getting a good quality one. Don't save a dollar 50 because you found it cheaper on eBay or Amazon. Buy a good name brand, buy a good quality, buy it through us at sdparts.com to make sure the little nickel and dime thing didn't cost you a, I'm saying it'd be about a $14,000 engine when this bad boy's done making some good power. So we'd like to thank the customer for letting us use this on display. We made sure to baby and treat it right. And we appreciate you guys stopping by for another one of our weekly tech videos. We try to do these every Friday. We do all sorts of different things. We have a lot of projects coming up in the future. Some of the part shortages have hurt us too. So we can't really get in the dining room yet to do some things, but don't worry. We haven't forgotten about those projects. We haven't forgotten about you. So subscribe, like, share to your friends to help out fellow hot rodders like you and me. And I will see you guys next week for another tech video. Thanks for stopping by. We got a few out of it.